Hey guys, OG Albina here, bringing you guys my week one battle of IBL season six against Platinum Howler and his, let me see if I can say it right, Coquitlam? I think it's Coquitlam Red Gyarados, it's a tongue twister. Um, but yeah, if you guys are excited for the IBL season and all that stuff, be sure to subscribe and stick around to catch our battles as they go up in the future and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, with that being said, let's just jump into the battle. I do want to do a quick little team builder portion, just so you can see my mindset and uh, um, why I'm bringing the six Pokemon I'm bringing and um, the, uh, the six potential that he could bring and, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Just so you have a background knowledge like that as we go in. Um, but yeah, if you did forget our team um, or haven't seen our draft analysis, which I'll put a link in the description below, like a whole playlist to the season so far, which is literally only the draft analysis. Um, but our team consists of the Mew, Komo'o, Greninja, Jolteon, Rebombi, Archaeops, Mega Scizor, Mammoth Swine, Serena, Porygon Z, and Cofagrigus, with our Z users being Komo'o and Archaeops, while his team is very scary and consists of the Celesteela, Hydreigon, Tentacruel, Swallow, Bronzong, Wigglytuff, Mega Gallade, Zeraora, Hippowdon, Crawdon, and Meganium, with Z users being Hydreigon, Wigglytuff, and Meganium. Um, so right off the bat, big start to me. The Celesteela is very hard for my team to break through. I am, spoilers, not bringing Jolteon this week. Um, so my team does very much struggle with that. Um, Hydreigon is very, very scary for me to switch into. Uh, Crawdont 2 is very, very scary for me to switch into. I don't switch into Crawdont at all. Um, I'm very, very scared of that thing. It can kind of just click buttons versus me in all honesty. Because my Dark Resist um, on this team is Komodo. And Komo definitely doesn't take on Hydreigon, and it doesn't take on Crawdon very well either. And um, you'll see my Komo set this week is actually meant to be one of our um, main win cons, uh, you know, in trying to win this game. So I don't want to waste it on checking out Crawdon and stuff like that if I don't have to. Um, the Mega Gallade is obviously, in my opinion, it's the best Mega in the format. Um, so it's obviously very, very scary. We do have one of the better checks in the game to it in our Cofagus right here. Um, but yeah, with that being said, let's just jump right in. It's a pretty decent segue before I explained it being a segue. Um, our first mod right here is going to be our Cofagris, rocking out with the Culverberry, Shadow Ball, Will O Wisp, Pain Split, and Hidden Power Fighting. 252, uh, max HP, pretty much max defense, and 8 special attack. Um, so this is going to be our main check to the, uh, the Mega Gallade. We, uh, we take that thing on pretty much 100% of the time. We can Shadow Ball, we can Will O Wisp it. We have Pain Split to up our longevity if we need to check other things. Hidden Power Fighting for his, um, dual ground, uh, his dual dark in the back if they want to try and pivot in on us. Um, and yeah, this thing's main job is going to be to check that Mega Gallade so that we can fear Mew up to do other jobs. Next up, we have our Kamo'o right here, rocking out with the Phytanium Z and the Overcoat ability, um, which I'll get to in a second. Dragon Dance, Taunt, Close Combat, and Dragon Claw. 52 um, HP, 220 attack, and 236 speed with an adamant nature. So this right here, this Komo'o, um, very interesting ability, obviously. Usually you see Bulletproof or Soundproof on this thing 100% of the time, and Soundproof would be really nice for the Swallow. But we're not a Swallow check because he can just Air Slash us or Hurricane us. So I figured um, having Overcoat is actually really, really nice um, for the Hippowdon, if that ends up coming. I really do want to um, actually potentially use things like the Hippowdon as setup bait. Um, a lot of his fatter, especially the Powdon, honestly, is like my main target for this, and potentially a Bronzong that's not really carrying, um, you know, psychic coverage. Bulletproof would be nice for the, um, the Gyro Ball, but again, I'm really, I really am expecting the Powdon to come, and it's a great catch-off physical check, and it checks come out pretty well. Um, if I can taunt that thing and get up a few Dragon Dances, this game's over. Um, Phytanium Z is an absolute nuke versus his team. Um, nothing really wants to take it at all. His fairy is neutral to fighting. And then we have a uh, Dragon Claw just as a secondary stab so that we don't have to lower our defenses or something like that. Or just so we can hit like the Tentacruel or um, something like that. Um, but yeah, that's going to be our Komo'o this week. Next up we have a Porygon Z. This is going to be our other wing con this week. Uh, rocking out with the Life Orb and Adaptability. Agility, Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, and Tri-Attack. 148 HP, Max Special Attack, and 108 Speed with a Modest Nature. So um, this thing hits his team really, really hard. Draftability to try attack his team doesn't appreciate it at all, minus the um, Celesteela, which we have Thunderbolt for, and the Bronzong, which we have Shadow Ball for. The rest of his team kind of just drops to a try attack, um, you know, if we get a tiny bit of chip. So that's going to be my goal this time, and just chipping things down to where Porygon Z can potentially win in the late game, um, you know, and take on the rest of his team. Um, 
the speed, I believe the speed, off the top of my head, I'm trying to remember what it is. I should have looked at this team a little bit more carefully beforehand. Um, I think it's child speed zero aura, creeping something at plus two. Um, if we can get the agility up. His speed tiers are a bit wonky, so it was, um, it was a bit tough. I'm trying to remember what the Kamo'o speed was for. Um, the Kamo'o speed, I believe, was for... Man, it was a max speed Celesteela. I think that's what it was. Um, I didn't really see the meat out speed or anything else. I think it was a max speed Celesteela. I don't remember its speed exactly. But yeah. Next up, we're going to have our Mew right here. Rock it out with the Culverberry Synchronize ability. Uh, Dazzling Gleam Soft Boiled Taunt Super Fang, 108 HP, 60 Defense, 44 Special Attack, 252 um, Special Defense, and 44 Speed with a Calm Nature. So, this Mew right here is going to be our main Swallow check, actually. If he's not Specs, we can take two Boom Bursts um, from Silk Scarf, I believe. Swallow. If he's Life Orb, then it is a roll. Um, that's something I'm willing, that's a chance I'm willing to take. This is also a good secondary Mega Gallade check. It, um, it can kind of lure his dark types with Dazzling Gleam. The special attack investment I know for a fact is to either kill the Hydreigon after rocks with Dazzling Gleam, or kill it, um, you know, before rocks. I totally forget exactly. This game was played a while ago, unfortunately. I probably should have just checked my calcs beforehand. Um, and then Taunt plus Super Fang is ridiculously good versus his team. His team does not appreciate like a stall breaker type view at all. It beats the Celesteela down, it beats the Tentacle down, I mean, even though they're not getting sight coverage. Definitely beats the Bronzong down, which is a big one as well. Um, the Hippowdon, um, and even the Meganium if that wants to come, because that thing's actually really annoying for the build that I brought, actually. Um, now that I'm looking at it, it's, it's actually pretty obnoxious. Um, but yeah, next up we have our Mammoth Swan right here, rocking out with the Focus Sash, Thick Fat Ability, Earthquake Knockoff, Ice Shard, Stealth Rock, um, max attack, 44 HP, and 212 speed with an adamant nature. This is going to be just a guaranteed rocker in this game. It gets up rocks pretty well versus everything on his team. Um, and it breaks through pretty much everything. This is a good lead in, his, in this matchup, in my opinion. It gives me an electric immunity for the Zero Aura. Um, we're rocking out with Earthquake, Knockoff, Ice Shard, Stealth Rock. Knockoff over Icicle Crash because I want to hit the Bronzong. I really want an Icicle Crash to potentially, like, you know, Eat a weak and sell a steal or something like that because we really can't touch sell a steal with this, but we can knock off its leftovers if it is a fatter set, which is what I pretty much expect. I think like a leech protect silly is really, really good versus me, so I don't really see a reason to bring the offensive set or anything like that. Um, but yeah, we can get up our rocks pretty easily on anything that we really want to. His removal is very limited. He has tentacle, which is a good spinner, but we do scare this thing immensely, um, that thing immensely with this. Um, and other than that, it's Hydreigon, which we can 2 8 KO with a Ice Shard. And the Swellow, which we can knock out with a tiny, tiny bit of chip with an Ice Shard. So, um, I definitely think Mammoth is a reliable rocker this game, and it kind of forms um, one half of our little hazard second core, um, including our Greninja right here. Rocking out with Life Orb, Torrent Ability, Spikes, Dark Pulse, Water Shuriken, Extra Sensory. 92 HP, Max Special Attack, 164 Speed. So this outspeeds everything on his team, barring the Zero Aura. Water Shuriken is great for Chip on the Zero Aura if it does get a little bit low on um, that, plus, you know, potential sand if he brings it out on. We can actually pretty much take that thing out if we just get it down to a certain amount. Um, we force a lot of switches with things, so we have spikes um, just to get those up. Again, his removal is a bit iffy. We have extra sensory to hit the spinner in Tentacruel. We can do a decent chunk of that, especially if it's not super death. Um, we can have a chance to it kill with the Life Orb. And then Dark Pulse is great stab for things like the Bronzong. It hits the Celesteela. It hits um, a good majority of his team and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, let's just jump right into the battle. All right, guys, here we are with the battle. So looking at the team that Howl elected to bring, looks like he went with the Wigglytuff, Zero Aura, Tentacruel, Celesteela, Bronzong, and Mega Glade. So right off the bat, first thing I noticed is no Hydreigon, no Crawdon, which is amazing because those things absolutely terrify me, and no Swellow, which was another huge, huge threat versus my team. Um, Versus Swallow, I kind of just had to hope it wasn't Specs um, to not 2 8 KO everything I brought. Um, but I can definitely see why he didn't want to bring the Swallow. The other two, the dark, I def the double dark, I definitely did see coming in all honesty. Um, but regardless, it's not something I'm going to complain about, just something I'm going to be grateful for. Um, I do see a Wigglytuff though, and that terrifies me because I didn't prep for Wigglytuff. I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not going to say, like, I sat down, I was like, oh, this is going to be my dedicated Wigglytuff switch in. I don't have one because I didn't think it would come. Um, because I don't really think it's a real Pokemon. But it did. 
and um, we're just going to have to play around it from there. I am going to like to lead off with my Greninja. I figure if um, he wants to leave Bronzong and get up his rocks, it's a great opportunity for me to get up my spikes as I scare him out, or if I find out if he's cold or if he wants to try and stay in, um, that kind of thing. So I figure it would be a pretty safe lead overall um, as we get in, and we'll see um, eventually that he ends up leading off with his Wigglytuff. And again, this is not a very good lead for me because, you know, I'm a dark type, he's a fairy type. And I'm not carrying U-turn, I'm not carrying gunk shot or anything like that. So I am just going to switch straight out. There's no reason for me to stay in. Um, he can see that I'm life orb with his frisk, which is pretty cool. Um, that's actually a really underrated ability in draft, in my opinion. I think frisk is really, really good in the format. As I'm gonna go into my mammal swine because I'm Sash, I can take anything. I don't think this thing ever has anything to Okomi. But he's actually gonna reveal Fling Toxic Orb, which is actually pretty crazy. Um, if there's anything on my team I want to be poisoned, it's this mammal swine. Um, However, uh, it, it still does suck. I would prefer not to be poisoned, obviously. Um, but hey, oh well. Um, regardless, it's a really cool thing to see. You don't see Fling, Toxic, or Wiggly Tough in every league match. So I thought that was pretty cool in all honesty. As right here, he is going to go for the versus I get at my stealth rock. The figure is a pretty free rock right there. Um, he only has the Zero Aura to potentially spin. I mean, the Zero Aura, the um, Tentacle to potentially spin them away. And this turn, I am going to go for the Earthquake just to kind of gauge damage and see what kind of Wiggly Tough this is. As he does, um, as I do do about half to this thing, and he does go for the Dazzling Gleam, which we do eat, showing that he's not very invested in special attack, if at all, and we can actually potentially 2 8 KO him with an Earthquake right here. As right here, I believe I am going to pull the switch out, expecting him to um, want to wish himself just to get it back up, with you know, pretty healthy, as I'm going to go on to my Mew. Um, I don't think he has Toxic on this thing, if he also has, if he had Toxic Fling, uh, Fling, Fling, uh, Fling Toxic Orb. As right here, he's going to go out into his Bronze on, um, on my... Mammoth Swine right here, which is fine because I'm not scared of this thing at all. I have Taunt, I have Super Fang. Um, this is actually really, really annoying for him to deal with, and honestly. So he can't Toxic me after the Taunt. I figured this thing would have Toxic because it doesn't have to worry about the synchronized, um, you know, getting Toxic back and stuff like that. But right here, he's going to go out into his Celesteela as I throw off the Super Fang and I get a big, big chunk off on this thing. Um, you know, also being able to potentially scout if he has leftovers, which he does. Um, leading me to believe he is probably that, you know, fatter lead seed protect set and stuff like that. Again, I didn't see offensive coming versus me. Right here, he's going to go for the protect, which is completely fine, as I believe I throw off the taunt just to, um, try and, you know, not allow this thing to poison me or lead seed me or anything like that. Um, or even set up an auto if it was the offensive set. But right here, he is going to get a little bit of lefties and then he's going to pull the switch out, I believe, into his, um, Mega Gallade right here. Yeah. So he's going to go out into his Mega Gallade, and I go for the Super Fang, expecting him to not want to go for a um, either a status move for the Celesteela or want to switch out because there's no reason it doesn't really help anything. That's right here. He is going to Mega Evolve, and I believe I just go off a Dazzling Gleam. Um, I knew it probably wouldn't knock him out. I had a chance to um, at below 50% after rocks, um, depending on spread, I think. Actually, no, I don't think he did have a chance to, but I figured I could live any one hit, being that he probably has knockoff. But he actually has the X Scissor. Which um, definitely surprised me because I figured knockoff would come because it covers both having the um, having the Kofag as a check and having the um, Mew as a check. It hits both of them, even though Colbert's likely on one or the other. Um, I figure it hits both because if he's X Scissor, he can't really touch my Kofag. As you're gonna see, this X Scissor bounced off my Kofag. I'm gonna um, obviously switch out because I want to preserve my Mew. It can still, you know, heal up on the Bronzong, the Celesteela, the Tentacruel, the Wiggly Tough. It's very, very good versus his team still at this point. And right here, he's just gonna let to stay in and go for the Zen Headbutt. There's no reason for him to really switch out as I am gonna go for the Shadow Ball and I am gonna pick off this Gallade right here. So down it goes, um, and we are able to pick up a quick 5 6 lead right here and take out a pretty big threat in the Mega Gallade. Next up, he is going to go out into his Tentacool. And right here, this is where the game starts going a little bit sour for me, man, because it's a lot harder. I think I was in a really good position up to this point. Right here, he is going to go for a Toxic. I'm going to switch out, expecting him to want to, um, you know, throw off a Sabo against me or something like that. He, I mean, he's going to go for the Toxic Spikes. Um, and this is really rough, because I don't have removal on this team. Um, now my Mew is going to get poisoned when it comes in, which makes Stallbreak and Mew much less threatening. Um, the Kamo'o is going to be limited when it comes in. The Kofagrigus is going to be limited when it comes in. Because right here, I'm going to go for the Extra Sentry, trying to get a flinch potentially, as he's going to go for a second layer of Toxic Spice, which again, very, very much sucks. Um, you know, getting uh, two layers up versus me, but now I can throw off another Extra Sentry, I believe, right here. Um, and we are able to chip down this Tentacle pretty, pretty low. 
um, down into the red. As I believe he goes for the, um, does he go for the rapid spin right here? Yeah, he does go for the rapid spin, so he gets away our rocks. So this was not a very good exchange on our end. Um, all we did was chip down this tender pearl, but it got up both players with toxic spikes and it spin away our rocks, um, which is super, super unfortunate. As right here, I'm going to go for spikes right here, expecting him to want to go for um, an attacking move or something like that, just so I can get up one layer of hazards at least. As he goes for the dazzling gleam, which is a really cool bring, um, probably also for the Komo'o, stuff like that, so it's not going to set up water for that. Um, as he's going to get a little bit of leftist recovery, I am going to live that um, Dazzling in though, because Tentacle isn't the strongest, and I am going to be able to knock it out with the extra sensory. So while we are up um, 6 to 4, we are in a pretty tough position at this point, in all honesty, because everything is going to start getting very, very chipped very, very soon. And right here, he's going to go into his Zero Aura. I believe I'd like to just go for the Water Shuriken, see how many hits I can get. I know I won't knock this thing out, but I know I can do a big chunk to it and chip it down pretty low in case he's like a bulk upset. If he tried to bulk up in my face, we would too at KO him pretty much always. So right here, we are going to get four hits. Um, I don't know, maybe five hits would have knocked him out. But right here, he's just going to go for the Drain Punch. He's going to pick off our Gren. Um, but we did get a, you know, a big chunk off on the Zero, which is very, very nice for us in the late game. Because this thing is the only thing, um, speed-wise, really threatening our Kamo'o threatening our Porygon Z. Um, so yeah. Next up, I am going to go into my Komo'o right here. I know I can live any one hit from this thing, any two hits really, but um, the poison is going to make it a little bit tougher. And I'm going to set up a Dragon Dance right here. Um, I know this is probably my best chance to absolutely just punch holes through his team. Because right here, he's going to go into his uh, Wigglytuff, which is again fine with me. He takes the Spikes chip. He's going to be able to first my fighting the MZ as I am going to go for the Dragon Dance. Now right here, I was forced, um, I was forced to, let me wait one second before I pause I was forced into a pretty tough position. Um, right here, he's, so he's frisked my fighting, fight Tinium Z. He knows I'm fight Z, and even if he has max defense based on, like, the damage that he was doing, or I was doing earlier, um, I figured out he's probably just max defense, no HP investment, because Quickly Tough has a bunch of HP, um, you know, has a really high base HP set. So, I figure right here, he may want to protect, um, just to scout for my Z move because he can potentially live, um, just so he can potentially live that into the next close combat. However, me, uh, after running some counts, I know that Z close combat into close combat after that will always knock out this weekly tough. So I'm going to just pop off my Z as he actually elects to not, um, not go for the protect right here. And I know 100% that I can knock out this wiggly tough. And this is great because nothing on my team will code this wiggly tough at this point. And wishing and protecting is going to be incredibly obnoxious for my team i really wanted to save the all-out pumpling for the zon uh for the um the bronze zong in the back the that would have been great to you know save to knock that thing out with but i felt this wiggly tough was as funny as it sounds honestly just as big of a threat versus my team um as that as the bronze zong in the back was so right here we are up six three but again things are definitely not sealed for us it's right here he's going to go into the bronze zong i'm going to elect to get chip off because i don't take this thing on very well um as I am going to get, you know, a big close combat off, get a good 60-ish percent. I probably would have knocked that with Z, I don't know for sure. But yeah, we are going to do a huge chunk to this thing as he does go for the Psychic. And he is able to knock out our Kamo'o. But our Kamo'o did its job. It definitely broke through his team incredibly, incredibly well. As we do die to the poison, so this is kind of where Toxic Spikes come to bite us, um, bite us in the butt. Because we actually would have just swept through the team potentially at this point. Um, you know, we probably wouldn't have swept through, but we would have been able to knock this out and then chip the Selly down and then just one with something else in the back. Uh, but right here, I'm going to go to the Porygon. And I almost agility right here, but I figured Psychic plus Toxic would be doing too much for me to win this game potentially. So I am just going to go for the Shadow Ball, knock this thing out, and I am going to take a little bit of Life Orb and a little bit of um, Poison right here. Now right here, this is, this, is the, uh, this is the play of the game. This is where things get very, very, very iffy. Um... So right here, this is my mindset. I'm looking at Calx and I see, even if he is a max specially defensive Celesteela, he is in range of a Thunderbolt from my Porygon Z. A Life Orb Timid Thunderbolt knocks him out from this range, or a Life Orb Modest Thunderbolt knocks him out from this range. 100%, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, unless I just can't see and I can't, I'm just looking at it completely wrong. So in my mind, what I think he's going to do, I think he is either going to protect to potentially get out of range of that, or he is going to pivot into his Zero Aura, knowing that the Thunderbolt knocks him out, and he's going to Volts Absorb, and he's going to get more health back, and then he's going to knock me out with a Drain Punch and potentially beat the rest of my team down. So, me thinking that's what his play is right here, I um, I think it's in my best interest to go for the Agility. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to see right here that he does not switch out, and he does not click Protect. 
which is uh, super, super unfortunate because now he's able to get the lead seed off, which is huge because now he can potentially stall out my Porygon Z. And um, this Porygon Z honestly just won at this point, or I just won at this point because I could have just gone, um, I could have just knocked this thing out, pivoted into my Mew, sacked it off to the Zero Aura, and knocked out the, uh, knocked out the mammals, uh, the Zero Aura with a Shadow Ball for my Kofag or a Ice Shard for my Mammal or something like that. But unfortunately, we're going to get that play wrong. I'm going to go for a Thunderbolt on his Protect right here. And now he's definitely out of range. Um, so at this point, I should have gone for a Shadow Ball. I should have gone for a Shadow Ball because it would have knocked out the uh, Zero Aura. And it would have, you know, chipped this thing into range with Thunderbolt. But unfortunately, I am going to make a, another very, very bad play. And I am going to go for the Thunderbolt again. As this time, he does decide to pivot out into the Zero Aura. Um, and this is very, 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 very bad for me because again, Shadow Ball would have knocked this thing out 100%. He's just being barely able to lift um, the spike right here, and he's gonna be able to get some Volt Absorb health back right here. And I'm just gonna go down, I believe, to uh, Leech Z plus Toxic right here. So while my Porygon Z was just in a great position to win right there, um, me overplaying a little bit, I get, I still do stand by my play. In all honesty, I still do stand by my play. I think the agility play made sense there. Um, I think it was more so just a 50-50 that I got wrong, is how I like to rationalize it. I really don't think that was a bad play on my end to go for that. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, our uh, Porygon Z is going to go down as he goes for the Volt Switch with his uh, with his Zero Aura on our Kofag, which sucks because he is going to get the crit, um, which means we potentially can't get two, uh, two Shadow Balls off on this Celesteela. Um, but again, at this point, it doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, my best play would have been potentially to, um, if I would have gotten two Shadow Balls off, maybe I could have Shadow, um, maybe I could have Super Fanged him in a range of like an Ice Shard or a knockoff from my Mammo, and then I could have picked him off with an Ice Shard from my, uh, from my Mammo Swine right there. But unfortunately, we are going to go down to the Toxic right here. As he goes for the Protect, there's no other better play that he could have went for. I'm going to go for the Pain Split, just hoping he chokes and doesn't for some reason. But unfortunately, we are going to go down right here. Um, and this game's looking pretty much all but sealed. It looks like we're actually going to pick up an L after a pretty convincing um, convincing early game where we got ahead pretty early and pretty quick. Um, just that one play, that 150-50, ended up kind of biting us in the butt. As right here, I am going to go into my Mew. Um, it is my last save and grace at this point. Obviously, my, uh, my Mammal Swine isn't really going to be able to stop this thing at this point. I'm not carrying Crash, and even if it was, it wasn't going to be doing enough to this thing. Right here, I want to go for the Soft Boiled. Um, as he does go for the Giga Drain right here. Um, and this was a bit odd. I figured, you know, potentially just the Leech Seed would probably be his best play. But, uh, you know, whatever. I, it still doesn't really make much of a difference. It was probably him trying to speed up the game a little bit. You know, this is pretty much over. Um, and we are going to lose this game. As he does go for the Protect just to rack up Poison Damage. As I believe right here, I go for the Super Fang. Um... And then this next turn right here, expecting him to want to, like, lead seed or something like that, I need to reset the poison turns on my Mew if I want to potentially save some differential. So I believe right here is the turn where I am going to double out into my Mammoth Swine, potentially maybe hoping he would, uh, you know, try and go for uh, another lead seed or something like that as he goes for another Giga Drain. Um, so now my Mammoth is going to go, and this is just going to seal the game. So the seal is going to be able to take out everything, uh, knock everything out pretty much. And the Toxic Spikes really ended up coming up clutch versus us and uh, taking us down this week. I really should have packed some kind of removal. I really overlooked it during prep, so that's 100% on me. Um, it was a great brain versus me in all honesty, and a great game played by uh, um, Howler right here. He really did outplay me and uh, got that 50-50 correct and, uh, you know, was able to bring back, uh, you know, us being ahead pretty heavy in the beginning there. So definitely Jesus to him. We are unfortunately going to drop our first week of the IVL. Um, hopefully next week we can bounce back. I believe we play against Clutch and his Kansas City Kingdras. I think that's the name of the team. He's a very cool team as well. We got to play against Lando T and uh, Jirachi and a bunch of cool mods like that. So hopefully we can come up with another cool team and uh, pull out a victory versus him there. Um, but yeah, with oh, well, we should probably let this um, you know all play out. We do lose to the Die to the Poison right here, so that's going to be the game. Um, but yeah, again, GG's to Howler. Um, make sure you check him out if you haven't already. Really cool guy. Really easy to schedule with, um, you know, and all that stuff. And he, he made the effort to uh, reach out to me and make sure he pronounced my like YouTube name and all that stuff correctly, which I actually thought was really cool of him. That was that was really funny to me. I thought that was really cool because most people are just like, oh, I'll figure it out. I'll just sound it out as we get into the video. I thought that was cool of him. So shout out to him for that. Um, definitely go check him out if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, with that being said, 
Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe and stick around in case, just so you can catch our battles as they go up um, each week. We got this league. We got a couple other leagues that we're a part of. And uh, I'm going to get out of here, though. Thank you guys again for watching. Later.